So my name is Amanda Lilliman. I am a shorebird researcher based at Charles Darwin University. I have uh, just finished my PhD on migratory shorebirds in Darwin Harbour, so looking at their general ecology and how to best manage them in um, our urban setting. I also am involved in a project on the Far East in Curlew, which is one of our largest shorebirds in Australia, and um, am involved in the BirdLife Top End group which is a volunteer organisation part of BirdLife Australia. And uh, I just wanted to share some information on this great knot, which is our most common shorebird that we have here in Darwin Harbour. And it's a critically endangered species under Australian legislation. So that means within Australia, um, it's got the highest level of conservation status and therefore protection. And because of that, and the fact that we have so many of these birds in the coastal reserve, we've got um, up to 9,000 great knots in the coastal reserve. The uh, Lee Point and Buffalo Creek and also Sandy Creek is classified as internationally important. And, uh, and that's, that's, a, um, that's based on the number of birds that we have at a site at one time. And so this bird is a migratory shorebird that only spends half of the year here in Australia. It breeds in the Northern Hemisphere in, um, in Russia, Siberia, and then it spends its time um, migrating through Eastern Asia where it stops in at the Yellow Sea. It might stay there for several weeks or a month, fatten up and then complete the rest of its migration to Australia to Darwin and to our coastal reserve for our summer season or our build up and wet season. And so at the moment, most of these birds have traveled north to their breeding grounds and they are in the Yellow Sea region right now, fattening up and they're going, uh, they're going further north after that. So, um, so there's a photo, that photo I took it um, of, these are the great knots, that's at Sandy Creek. So they, they will roost at Sandy Creek and roosting means resting essentially. So at, um, you can go to the next slide at, so this is their, their migration pathway. This is called the East Asian Australasian Flyway. And it's essentially showing the map that the shorebirds take. It's like a migration highway that the birds travel within. There's no boundaries. It's purely dictated by the birds movements. And um, it's just something that we classify as humans. So, um, so there you can see the non-breeding habitat in Australia and Southeast Asia, and then it's breeding habitat in the Northern Hemisphere. So when the bird is here in Australia in our build up and wet season, it's spending all of its time in coastal habitat. It's considered a coastal obligate, which means it only spends time at the foreshore in, um, in the coastal environment. It will spend its time feeding at low tide on intertidal invertebrates, things like pippies and bivalves, which it, it gets from the sand and the mud. So it pokes its billy and it can feel the invertebrate in the ground and it pulls it out. And it just is do, doing that for most of the low tide period. And then as the tide starts to come in, the birds will rest um, usually up the beach, so at Lee Point, Sandy Creek and a couple of other places. But Lee Point and Sandy Creek are definitely the most important shorebird sites around Darwin Harbour. And um, they're also so, um, so well visited by people, all of us using the beaches. And uh, uh, let's see what the next slide is. And so this is one of the bird hides that's in the uh, Casuarina Coastal Reserve. And now we've got, yeah, the next slide is a photo of uh, the no dog sign. So from Lee Point through to Buffalo Creek, it's no dogs allowed because of the international importance of the migratory shorebirds at the beach. So for people walking their dogs, they are allowed to turn left once they get to Lee Point. If they go west, they, they can have their dog there, but um, towards the east is no dogs within um, that area. So, um, but most of you probably know that. The reason why is because the dogs, um, as well as humans, disturb these birds if they get too close uh, to the, 
to the to the birds. So the birds like some distance, uh, essentially like a buffer zone, and uh, and when they are disturbed, so when when the, when the people and their dogs get too close, it actually can cause the birds to fly off. And that can be a waste of energy for the birds um, when they actually need those fat reserves for their long distance migration. The other birds you can see around the foreshore of the coastal reserve, um, there's, there's almost 30 species of migratory shorebirds that we get here, we're very lucky. We also get the Far Eastern Curlew, which is, um, which is another critically endangered shorebird. And you can see those birds at Buffalo Creek and at Sandy Creek, but at this time of the year, most of the birds have flown north uh, on their migration. So it can be a little bit hard to see some of these birds, but there's still a few around. Just this morning, I was out at Lee Point doing a monthly bird life. Uh, shorebird count and I counted about 500 shorebirds including 300 of these great knots. So um, I think I'll wrap it up there but I will just say that if anybody's interested in getting involved we do a monthly monitoring program through BirdLife Top End and they can get in touch um, with me or with anybody else in the BirdLife team or in the shorebird community. We're always happy to um, have new people come in and, and get involved in counts. So, um, so yeah, please, please do um, get in touch. Thanks, Amanda. That's, um, that's, that's great. And what a fantastic story. I mean, we've got you know, 9,000 of the critically endangered birds that come and you know, use, use the coastline in, in Casuarina Coastal Reserve. And it, you know, to me, the, one of the standouts of that story is it really highlights why we actually do need um, to be really careful about where we, where we take our dogs in the, in the reserve. 